continuing in our series called... Okay, okay, good. Just making sure you're paying attention here. Party starters. Um, so, for those of you who, uh, who have not been here, maybe you can learn from those who have, what is the... Uh, um, what is the uh, idea of what a party is that we're talking about? Okay, Jesus, yes. Having the full life, yes. That's what I was thinking. Is that what you're going to say? Yep, that's, Jesus talked about having abundant life, and, and that's the party we're talking about, and yes. That was summer surge. But actually, it's, it's going to come, it's, yeah, we're going to talk about it again today, so good, good for you. But that was a lucky guess. But uh, we've been mostly, we were talking about that verse from John, I think it's 15, shoot, 13? Something like that, where I've come to give you life, have it to the full or have abundant life. So that was Jesus talking to his disciples. Anyway, um, I want to talk about one of my favorite parts of a good party. You guys want to know what that is? Food is up there, yes. Music. The people. That's food. Games. Think specifically like birthday parties. Birthday cake. Say it louder. Gifts. Gifts. Presents. They're the best part of a birthday party, right? Like, I mean, unless you're not the one opening them, and then you're like, well, this is boring. Can we go back to playing cornhole or something like that? No, I'm just kidding. But, but. In all seriousness, I, I, I love the, like, when I, when I was growing up, I almost couldn't sleep on, like, Christmas Eve or, like, the day before my birthday because I was like, I wonder what my parents got me for my birthday or I wonder what, what I got for Christmas, you know, because cause we like getting things, like, we like getting gifts. We like getting the open presents. There's something about the excitement. That, how many agree with me that, that opening gift bags is less exciting than ripping apart paper for a gift? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. And so, uh, that, that's, I don't know, that's just a little thing for me. I, I remember growing up, there were two gifts that I remember more than anything else. One was when I was in elementary school, my, uh, my parents got me a, uh, an X Games bike for my, uh, for my birthday. And it was one of those like, that you could spin the, the wheel around and the wires wouldn't get tangled because it was like, specifically designed for X Games where they like, they do tricks and stuff, which I never learned how to do. But it also came with like wheel pegs so that you could have like, my brothers would ride on the back and like stand and then hold on to my shoulders while I rode. And then I had another brother that could ride on the front because there were pegs on those too. But then it was hard to steer because he was heavy. But that was just, I remember that bike a lot growing up and it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, another, another gift that I remember getting that was, it was a Christmas gift, but I remember uh, that kind of changed my life more as I was getting a guitar. I got an electric guitar and a bass guitar and I started on praise team that year at my church because of those gifts. And so it was a lot of fun. It's one of the best parts of that. But one of the, the coolest parts of getting a gift is when you get a gift that you like really wanted and you're excited. It's fun to see whoever gave you that gift light up and enjoy watching you excited. Like, like I remember my parents like cheering and like, yeah, like because I got to open up something that they knew I would really like. And, uh, and as a dad now, I get to experience that with my kids. I get to experience what it's like to get them something. You know, I, I, I always grew up thinking like, you know, I'm never going to spoil my kids. And, and I try not to, but I can understand the temptation now because when you've got your cute little kid like, Dad, can I please have this? And then it's like, yes, son, I'll, I'll, let's, go, let's go buy that $50 transformer because you, you asked so nicely. But, but then obviously we can't just give people everything they want all the time. But I get the temptation because it's, it's so fun to give gifts. It's, it's fun to be on the other end of that. And uh, if, if you've given anything to anybody, then you know that it feels good. It feels good to give somebody something uh, almost better than it does to be the one receiving it at times. Uh, because you know you get to make somebody's day or they're going to get to use something that they really enjoy. Um, may, maybe you felt the nudge to be generous towards somebody, uh, but when it comes to like actually doing it, you, you just don't because either it's awkward or uh, maybe you can't afford whatever it is you want to give to somebody or, or maybe you know that you could give somebody something, but, but for whatever reason, you, you don't follow through on it. I, I've been there before because thinking about something, having good intentions is easier than actually following through and executing an idea. So. Maybe that's just me, but maybe you felt that way. Um, 
may, maybe the thing that keeps us from being generous, and if we're, if we're being real, this could be not even just like an, a physical gift, but it could be generous with your time. If you have a job, maybe, maybe generous with money, but uh, generous with your gifts, maybe like not like a, a physical gift, but like your talents and skill sets. If you notice somebody needs help with something like tutoring or, or something like that, and, and you have the ability to give that, sometimes, sometimes if we're being honest, I think the reason we don't give generously to others with whatever it is we have to offer is because some of us, I think, think of winning or attention as a limited commodity. And what I mean by that is we're sometimes, I think, in the back of our minds, a little bit afraid to give to someone else because it will take the attention off us and onto that person. Or it, it will somehow diminish what we have because we're giving it up for someone else. It's like when, when your parents ask you to share something with your siblings, it's like, I could share this, but then it means I don't get this, right? And so I struggled a lot with sharing. My brother, on the other hand, was great at it. He would open a gift, and I'd be like, can I see it? Like, here, you've got to try this out. You know, and I was always like the jerk older brother that was like, no, it's mine. I just got it. Go away. Leave me alone with my toys, right? And so it, it, sometimes I think some of us are afraid to be generous with what we have because we feel like it's a limited commodity. Like, like if, if they win, it means I lose. When in reality, we, we should probably just think about it like a team mindset. If, if they win, I win. If I win, they win. We're all on the same team. It's like, it's like if, uh, if someone's playing soccer and they're going down the field and they kick it and they score a goal, and, which happens like once a year, right? But um, just kidding. Anybody like soccer? <laughs> okay, yeah. So sorry for my jokes there, but I always make, but anyway, um, it's not, I, I would say it's not a real sport because no one ever scores, but it's way more of a sport than most sports because of how much physical training you have to have to be in. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. That doesn't really matter. I told you I'm a little off this morning, so bear with me. But it's like when somebody in soccer scores a goal, the whole team comes over and celebrates. They pick them up on their shoulders like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We finally scored a goal. Everybody's like cheering because they're all on the same team. The guy who scored the goal isn't the only one winning. They're all winning. And so uh, when it comes to giving of ourselves, we have to think about it like that. We're, 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 we're furthering our goal as a team, which is to bring people together, to help people uh, uh, excel in, in what they have and all that kind of stuff. So what if we're missing it? What if we're missing it when we think about, when we think about winning as a, a limited commodity? If we think about giving other people attention, it means we get less attention. If we think about giving, it means I don't have, I lose. What if, what if we're missing the point? Um, what if there's a better way to start the party for everyone, including ourselves? So during his time on earth, Jesus spent a lot of time uh, with people, teaching, performing miracles, doing all kinds of things. And, uh, and so at, at one point in time, he was teaching, and Jesus would often use parables to get his point across. You guys know what parables are? Somebody just shout out what a parable is. Say that louder. Okay. Close. <laughs> it's like a fable or fairy tale, except Christian. Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's like a story Jesus would use to get his point across. A riddle? a riddle, kind of. Sometimes there was some riddling in the parables. But uh, this is what I was told growing up, okay? Um, I was told a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Anybody heard that definition before? Like, it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus is telling something, a story that people would relate to, that they resonate with. Um, it's like if I were to tell a story about a man who had Instagram and the way he used it, right? But because we all know what that's like and relate. So Jesus would often use parables about stuff that would relate to the people of that time. And so let me kind of set the scene for you. Jesus was approached by a guy who had a complaint against his brother, right? Uh, their father had died, and, and one brother wanted to share the wealth that they had inherited, and the other one wanted to keep it all for themselves, right? That, that's, that's kind of the, the, what, what's happening here. And so the, the brother looking to receive a portion of his money uh, asked Jesus to get involved and tell his brother, hey, you got to share. 
And, uh, and this is what Jesus said. He said, beware, watch out, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Right, that's, that's what, what Jesus said in response to the brother trying to get his other brother to share. In other words, be careful uh, about thinking that life is all about what you have. And isn't, that, isn't that the issue with, with being generous? Is we're concerned about what we have or, or what we don't have? And Jesus is saying, hey, life is measured with greater things than that. It's not about what you do or don't have. Okay, um, A lot of times, and I'm sure the brother was thinking, oh, well, what about me? And we think, well, what about me? Will there be anything left for me? And I think that's, that's human nature. We, we want to be taken care of. We want to make sure our own needs are met. But to help us really get the point, Jesus expanded his answer with a parable. And, uh, and there's a rich man who, who made uh, a lot of money by running a, a, a farm that, that did really well. And, and so he, grew up so he grew so much stuff on the farm that he literally like ran out of space to store it all. So instead of being generous, he, he built more barns to store it all, right? And so in, instead of finding a way to, to give the extra crops to those maybe who were hungry, he decided to build a bigger barn to store it all for himself. And, and he thought he would be satisfied, right? But, but God had a different idea of what this means, uh, or what he should have done. So Jesus says, yes, uh, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. In other words, if you focus all your attention on storing up wins for yourself, on storing up things for yourself uh, in this life, we came into the world with nothing and we're going to leave with nothing. So maybe life's not all about what we can accumulate or what we can build for ourselves. Maybe life's about something bigger. And that's, that's really the point that Jesus is talking about. It's kind of harsh, right? Uh, a person's a fool to store up earthly wealth and not have a rich relationship with God. It sounds harsh on the surface, but I think we all know that's true, right? What, what good is it if we win the whole world but lose our soul? And so Jesus is talking about this, and it, the, the point is we have to be generous with what we have, whether that's money, whether that's our talents, our skill sets that we can help other people with, whether that is our time, some of us have more time than others, and we got to share that. Uh, there, there's lots of things that we have that we can share with others. Maybe it's encouragement or kind words. You don't have anything else to give, but you can see the good in other people and just tell them about it, right? Whatever that is, we have to learn to be generous because a party starter knows helping someone else win is just as important as winning themselves. And, and this goes back to, to that sports analogy. If you don't like soccer, basketball goal. Think about Michael Jordan finally scoring the, the winning basket as the buzzer runs out and the whole bench runs into the, onto the court and starts cheering, right? It's Because a win for him is a win for everybody. And if we view our relationships and we view people like that, a win for our friends is a win for me. A win for my enemies, uh, if, if it means bringing them closer to God, is a win for all of us, right? We have to help. Um, we have to help share ultimately the good news of Jesus and that's abundant life that we've been talking about. But a lot of times that happens by giving of our own gifts, whatever they may be. So, um, and, and that, that's really what I want you guys to recognize. But in another verse of the Bible, this is it's actually f funny. I didn't plan for this to work out this way. But this, this next verse is a verse that we actually did on Friday at our last day at Summer Search. Um, and it lines up perfectly with what we're talking about here. So check this out. Paul was writing to Timothy in chapter 6, and he says, Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and, and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. It's a little bit of a different version than we read on Friday. Uh, and on Friday, we read from the NIV. This is the NLT. But it says basically the same thing. Be rich in good deeds. Be rich in good works. Rather than storing up earthly treasures, be rich in the things that actually matter in life. Because a party starter knows helping someone else win is just as important as winning themselves. So, one, um, start by paying attention. Look for ways that you can help somebody else win. Right? 
make sure you're paying attention and see what, what do you have, uh, what, what, what can you give, and who around you could benefit from your generosity of what you have. Then secondly, do just one thing to help someone else win. Once you identify that, do it. Don't just allow it to be a good thought with good intentions, but actually follow through on it. And, and three, cheer someone else on, right? Be an encourager. Be the biggest, loudest, most excited teammate for somebody else around you, right? That's one of the best ways that, that we can be generous. That's one of the best ways we can be a party, start, party starter is by, by cheering on the rest of us because we're not in competition. And I think a lot of times we view each other as being in competition just because that's kind of how our culture is sometimes. That's kind of sometimes, again, going back to that human nature, but we have to be able to celebrate the, the joys and happiness and the, the wins of those around us. So as you guys go to your groups, you got a few minutes to, to kind of uh, process this together, but what's one thing that you have that you can give to somebody else? What's one thing you have that you can give to somebody else. I want you to think about that. I'm going to pray, and then you'll go to your groups, and then I'll stick around up here. If you, uh, if you have your verse memorized and you haven't come and shown it to me yet or, or quoted it to me from this last week, I'll be here, and you can do that, and then um, we'll, we'll be done for the week. So